Good morning. John F. Kennedy, when in 1962, defined that we or dream that men should land on the moon, he given 10 years for the American scientists, researchers, that men should land on the moon. And by 1969, men landed on the moon. I think Brett King did the same thing to put 2025 as agenda that new banks will evolve. And now new banks will evolve in a new manner. But he made, the, made us to define and took us to moon. My job is to bring back from the moon because complexity of technology of taking off from moon and bringing back to Earth is as complex as going to the moon. So where we are saying inside intellect, applying design thinking for 4.0, what I, few things which resonance, resonate with the Brett King is first design, anything designed with the first design principle, point number one, learning from the context, from the history, the patterns in the history, how various things have evolved, go back to the etymology of it, point number two. Connecting the dot, point number three, pattern recognition, whether it's an AI pattern recognition or a business pattern recognition or one market to second market pattern recognition, whole story was around pattern, rec pattern recognition. Fifth is how data can be synthesized faster in AI, computer can synthesize faster than what human mind can do. Then banking is embedded in a business. So banking is not a separate element. It's embedded into business itself. The complexity in corporate banking will embed the banking where the various sectors of the banking will be very different. New advice paradigm, in whether it's a wealth related, investment related. It has to be contextual through and through. It has to be predictive, frictionless, data, real time are the four basic needs of it. And bank needs to compete with the technology companies. So this is around 11 different points I observed during the Brett King conversation and talk. Now I'm trying to con connect with intellect. We are saying disruption is important versus iterations. Customer is the key, we must provide ad addictive experience and leveraging technology to drive exponential operating system. There are three basic fundamental, save and store money, which is a deposit. A society has money, whether he has surplus money or is a short of money. If he has surplus money, he will store it. There is a surplus, he needs money, then he needs to borrow it. And then middle piece is move money. So banking is as simple as three levers. If you run on a first design principle, that defines the banking. And then you build up a multiple borrowing product and multiple deposit product and multiple moving products. Yes, we understand where we want to go. But fundamentally, if I am with all of you since I am working since 86 with all of you as a in a banking, it's a complex thing. Banking 4.0 is exciting, but still we need to run the current system, existing system, multiple system, multiple technologies, multiple architectures, multiple products. Each one of us in a banking, any banking system is having a four or five vendors products are sitting there, four or five architectures are sitting there, seven, eight data files are sitting there. We are still using the basic core architecture of most of the products in a banking, which is a band-aid design. Because the design was done sometime in 1990s when client server came in. Most of the player in the world has used that as a fundamental architecture, not and financial architecture. The architecture fundamentally is a barrier. It's like an old building which can be modernized. It's not Palace Versace, which is a newly designed, newly pillar and founded. It, if something has to be done, the similar kind of hotel in Italy, you can imagine that this kind of a conference room will have a three pillars in between. And that's what happens in that complexity today. Complexity dimensions. Complexity could be in architecture. First is architecture level of complexity. We need to have a unified architecture to achieve what we want to drive on moon. We need to have the 
symmetry of the art architecture. Today, with the multiple products, multiple system, having a different architecture, your starting point has to be established. What is the architectural piece is there? Second is data. Huge complexity of the data because every customer has, every product has his own customer data file. Now, if they have five product, one doing, dealing trade finance, one dealing cash management, one dealing core banking, one dealing wealth management, and sitting on a four data sets. I think there's a golden copy of the customer itself is a big issue in the banks. The third complexity comes around, on one side we want innovation, on second side we want stability. And then we can need to launch multiple products. Each time we launch a new product, it brings a new set of business rules, new set of processes, and when you bring those new processes to the old process, there are frictions get created, there are multiple friction points get created. Complexity four is around constantly rec tech, security, keep on coming there, which Brett put a point of view there, that regulator keep bringing every three months, every six months, some complexity there. And fifth is around multiple generation of platforms each one of us have. All the banks run on a multiple technology platform. So there are five levels of complexity one has to deal with to design a unified architecture of 2025. And this was a problem I was battling with in 2006, 2007, and I visited Stanford and Silicon Valley. I was saying, what is Silicon Valley doing differently? The curiosity was, how are they solving problem? And how are they solving problem at a scale? Because by that time, Google and other companies started showing the sign that they can be scalable to a different level. And that's where my journey of design thinking started. Because I found that underlying element in Silicon Valley was the Stanford starting in 1992, a course on design thinking. They are recognizing design thinking as a science, design thinking not only as a, just a verbose or vocabulary, they acknowledge in 1992, design thinking is a science, it's a way of doing things, it's a way of thinking. But mystery for me was, how do I apply in writing a banking systems? How do you deploy in my current systems? It's okay to launch Google, which is a new technologies, new, uh, new spaces, but in existing spaces, how do you apply it? We started coming back to the company and started taking design thinking program, brought a lot of uh, insights into design thinking. And I found our success was around 20-25%. We could able to drive the design thinking in the people head. But we, as soon as the problem, big problem comes in, we have a tendency to go back to our basics and rectifying the current systems. And that's where the design thinking uh, faced a resistance till 2011. At 2011, we thought it differently that yes, if that is a, the thing if you has, we have to set up intellect and design thinking is a core subject on which we want to build our application. The problem is how do I move the technology people, 4,000 people in the company to move from order taker to a agenda setter and that is where the biggest challenge happened and that is the time we set up a team of 10 people in the company to say let's put up a design center, let's visualize what a financial design center could be, and we given a complete uh, 30,000 square feet of the space. Let's design something over here. This is the first space in which we can design. If we can design this, we can design banking systems also. So let's take a challenge of ourselves where we brought in people from marketing, technology, operations, architects, interior designers come together to put a design center together. And that was a starting in 2013, we started looking at to change the mindset of the internal people first, and then with the teams of the customer. We go on to first, first principles of design. What is the bank meant for? What I have to give? I have to give lowest cost to income ratio. I think all of the bank's desire is my operating cost should be lowest. Second piece is, if I'm launching a product, I can bring more customers per product. 
if they are existing products, then I can cross sell more product per customer, and then I drive more transaction per customer. So if these are the four agenda point, four principal point, what I say is lowest cost to income ratio, MCP, MPC, and MTC, if these are four principles, then all the system should be based on these four design principles. Then we define three laws of design thinking, what we learned. Apple with the four products generate $200 billion of revenue, while IBM with 100 products generate half the revenue. So first principle of design thinking was less is more. Second principle, we see last 2%, 98% products are similar. Most of the products every bank produces, 98% products are similar. 98% phones are similar. All the functionality is similar. It's last 2%, that gets Apple 200% value. So it's about the detailing of that last 2%, which makes this hotel very different from any other hotel in the world, in the city. That minor, and that is not even 2%, I say 1%, 99% product can be fine. The last 1% design is the most critical design. And third principle is we need to prioritize. We need to prioritize not on a scale of 1 to 10, we need to pr prioritize on a scale of 10, 100,000. So every item which is there, you need to categorize whether it's 1,000 gram item, 100 gram item, or 10 gram item. So there are three design thinking principles we form. To handle the complexity, to handle the comprehensiveness, to handle the continuous change, and to handle the cost. If these are four Cs which we driven from my four principles, then I need to look at it as an agenda for internally inside intellect. Then we define the, we broke the problem by observing pattern into five major blocks. I call it five step. First was design thinking. Second was observing patterns and creating frameworks. It was important that we need to understand where the system works well and where the system fails. We need to observe patterns and anti-patterns both together and then create a frameworks. The third thing is for the robust and agile products, I need to create some specific patterns which can be embedded into technology so I can create a low coding platforms. Once the platform and product is ready, then I have to deliver with a predictability. And finally, I need to have a API ready contextual products which is coming out of it. The five step process, I'll go one by one over the last uh, 12 years of our journey, how did we and build all these elements into this? So I'll take up design thinking. What is our understanding of design thinking? This is the definition of design thinking you might have seen. I want to look at design thinking, it says abstract subject. I picked up three definitions of design thinking, not one definition of design thinking, so that every human mind can understand relevance, what he wants to contextualize design thinking. First thing is, of design thinking is customer desirability, what customer is looking for, what Brett has put a lot of emphasis on. Technology is a feasibility part of it, a face recognition is a feasibility part of it, but somebody has to create a business out of it, and that's a business viability of it. That's and financials which is there, and intersection of this is experience. So that's the first definition of Stanford IDEO, which put it, put it together is a definition of design thinking. Second definition of design thinking is you observe mystery in the place, you start identifying the pattern and convert them to heuristics, and when you convert into the algorithm, that time it becomes design. So moving from mystery to heuristics to algorithm, that it becomes design. So when you say a complete STP in a banking, that's the algorithm of STP. It's 98% STP versus 97% STP. That's a fundamental difference which is there. The third definition of simple design, design thinking definition, is around understanding requirement, stated and unstated, observing patterns, which is positive patterns and negative patterns. Third definition is connecting the dots. And fourth step is 
and connecting the dots within the box and outside the box. And finally, unearthing the blind spots. Don't know what I don't know. So what is the blind spot of a bank? What is the blind spot of the team to focus on I don't know what I don't know. If I know it, I can find the path. This meet is about something which I don't know, I need to discover it. So if these are three definitions of design thinking, now how do I apply into a teams? And what are the teams dynamics which is there? What are the behavioral dynamics of applying design thinking? When Brett King says that behavior is a critical part of starting the product design, then internally as organization design, we need to integrate these things into a sub-element which goes inside the team dynamics. We all know we need a skills to design anything. So skills is a programming skill, skill is a domain skill. And these skills has to convert into expertise, expertise of a surgeon who can dissect a particular neurosurgery or any intense surgery, which needs third dimension in the team is perspective, the holistic view, the future view, which is a perspective, and then idea. Fourth is idea. What is idea? How you define an idea? I ask this question to our team. How you define an idea? They say, oh, electric bulb. I say, no, what is, how you define an idea? Can you touch and feel the idea? What is the definition of it? You have a knowledge available. And how do you connect the knowledge patterns or knowledge packet in a new pattern is an idea. If knowledge packet when he's taken a horse cart, I take the example of a same horse cart with a motor. Now motor is replaced. I take a next step on it. That motor which runs horizontally because human mind was to replace the horse cart with a motor and that's why it's called HP. Somebody challenged it. Can this motor run vertically? Vertically was stairs. So he connected the dot between horizontal movement and vertical movement and created an elevator. One, one connection of the dot. And then similarly, the same motor then become part of my audio system, the LPs, and where the rotation is required. So each time you keep connecting the dot, you create a new products out of it. And that's the idea. You need to generate ideas in the team. And finally, you need to weave them into a together and align them. If there are too many ideas, also that's not right. So these five things we call sepia the five driving the designing, design thinking. In any team, we need to have a five teams called SAPIA. Just to remember as an acronym, SAPIA is the old color. But in spite of the best skills, perspective, ideas, I observed that we are not able to design the best product in the marketplace. Something beyond the skill, expertise, perspective, idea, and alignment. And then we start spending time on behavioral science of the people is what are the five elements which are frictional forces? What is the frictions are there? When you talk about frictionless, I need to talk about the frictional forces which stops the thinking of the ideas. The first friction is a doubt. Doubt is positive, doubt can be negative. Doubt is positive when you are at the early stage of the design, doubt is negative when you are halfway in between the design. And a lot of time, you must have seen, oh, I thought of it, this design. I thought of this product earlier. And that was the reaction I was getting from my teams that, oh, this was the idea earlier. I, when I asked the question, why didn't you do it? Oh, we were not sure about it. Whether it will be accepted by you or whether it will be, it will be done by us. Is it sufficiently difficult to do it? Second is conflict. Is conflict good or bad? Is good or bad? Who says good? Very good, eh? How many times do you believe conflict is a good? Yeah, depend on the context, that's true. But normally conflict uh, as a word itself is seen negative. In our families, in our friendship, whenever you say conflict, it is, it is interpreted by human mind as a negative. But conflict, if you define conflict and do an anatomy of conflict, that is, means difference of opinion, difference of perspective, or difference of expectation. There are only three 
definition of conflict which can be there, and if difference of opinion, difference of perspective is a key source of creativity. So if I define creativity, creativity and conflict, the definition will be same. Unless I have difference of opinion and difference of perspective and difference of expectation, I cannot bring the creativity. Third force is my anger, which is typically you must have seen in the, all of us. Whenever something is not behaving the way we want it to behave, it expresses, the body expresses a signal through the anger. Anger is a symbol of whether you express it or suppress it. Whenever there is a discordant view between what you want a certain expectation of the system and you don't get it, you get a feeling of anger. Few people express it very loudly and few people have an ability to manage it better. For a design thinking, you will have a failures, but we need to know when to deal with the anger, not halfway and kill the project. Fourth is a fear, fear of trying something new. When somebody asks a question, I, why Indian banks are not able to do what the end financials are doing, somewhere the fear factor was there, whether we want to go full hog, do we are, whether we are going to 90% of it. What I mentioned, last 2% is 200%. Sometime when we take the innovation, we go up to 98% and last 2% we leave it for the fear. And finally, is about ego. Ego is about, I know it all. It's not about arrogance. Ego can be in middle manager. It can be in a developer. Ego is not about the hierarchy. Ego is about the person and human mind. That's the ego. When human mind start believing, I know it all, we have a problem because this world is changing so fast. No, but no human mind can learn as fast as the thousands of minds which are changing the world. So these five elements, we call it decaf. Is basically you can drink the coffee, but you observe these five elements in design thinking. There are three forces which can be multiplier impact. First force is, is moving out of comfort zone. A lot of us are sitting in a comfort zone of a making certain amount of margin profit in the bank. How do I move out of that comfort zone if I'm launching a new product? Because I have to cannibalize something what I'm doing today. That's a big decision. And that is a vulnerability. How do I move from a comfort zone to vulnerable zone? When we move from Polaris to intellect, Polaris was making a 3 billion rupee profit together. When I move to intellect, we are investing 300, 3 billion rupee per year for our R&D investment of 1,100 people. Our investment per year was 300 crore in R&D itself. So I am losing the money at that time. So that is moving from a comfort zone to the vulnerable zone because we believe the future is where we can contribute technologically. Second is appreciation, the positive around you, celebrate them. And third thing is around limiting beliefs. As we grow old, we start having some failures. The set of failures which is happening in our life become a limiting beliefs. It happened in any organization also, when they grow up, we organization has a memory which is longer for the failure than for successes. In a company, in a year, they would have 25 successes and one failure. Organization will remember only one failure and forget about 25 successes. That's the human mind, how it remembers the failure. And those 15 failures of the organization holds back the growth of the organization and trying out new things. When the organization started, it was doing all things new. And when you're saying new fintech companies has to start, for them there is no limiting beliefs. This limiting belief can hold back one-tenth of the capacity of the company. So a lot of things which you are, Brett King is saying, some, sometime we need to observe in the banks what is our limiting beliefs. What are the failure points? Why we are not taking the next step? Why we are not jumping to it? When some of the banks, when Brett King is advising, he's saying, oh, no, 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 it's not possible. Signature is not possible. Some, you have to challenge the fundamental behavior. That's a limiting belief. When you go to the paper, you say, no, no, signature was not required. So there are three things which is value driver called well. So there are 13 elements where you can paint the human mind or organization mind towards design thinking. So we say five elements of sapia, three elements, five elements of frictional forces, which is decaf, and three elements of well, vulnerability, appreciation, and limiting beliefs. So the first step was bringing everybody in the company to understand that conflict is 
healthier if it is handled appropriately. Doubt and fears are natural. Ego is a natural. All these elements are natural. It's, we need to recognize and apply appropriately. Once we did that, the next step was training the team to observe patterns. Because in definition three, we say observing patterns and connecting the dots. We observe and identify patterns, so various customers where we succeed and fail, we observe patterns, connect the dots, and understand stated and unstated needs. The third definition of design thinking. When we put a patterns, we understand by formal research, like we did a formal research on our architecture. What are the architecture issues are there? Jadi Billa, who was CTO in 2008, he did a research on patterns, what makes the system scalable, and he found out the patterns which is coming out are around seven different architectures which are there. It's not a one architecture. We identify and research out there are seven different architectures which needs to work together. The second patterns we look at it, the knowledge is knowledge packets which are there in a banking where we need to connect business and technology. The biggest challenge in this industry is that the banking domain people who know the bank and technology people are on two sides of the same floor or two different floors. So one floor is for technology and one floor is for business people. While the, when we say technology company will define the next set of banks, then they have to come together. So we need to connect. So framework one, are, one was around architecture, framework two was around connecting business domain with the technology domain. We identified the seven type of architecture which are important. First architecture is around the UX, UI, customer experience. Second is around operational workflows, how it is running. Third is around decision support system. Fourth is around risk architecture, which is embedded into a system. Fifth is around our performance of the system. Sixth is around integration of system within the bank and outside the banking system. And seventh is around security architecture. So there are seven architectures which came together. And this is we call Coparis architecture and we observe the pattern and anti-pattern to design the products. Then we look at, we inspired from periodic table. Periodic table in chemistry gives the ability to predict some behavior patterns. And it's on a one sheet of paper. So when it is a one sheet of paper, how do we understand banking on a one sheet of paper? Can we look at banking as a one sheet of paper when new person joins in the company, new technology person is there, new banker is there? How do you look at how various products are connected? That's what we call periodic table of banking. So we took a challenge to design the periodic table of the banking. This is what I say periodic table of the banking. We look at it that there are 10 different lines of business. G1, core banking. G2, lending systems. G3, credit card system. G4, wealth management system. G5, brokerage system, G6, security system, G7, cash management system, G8, liquidity management systems, G9, trade and supply chain finance, and G10 is on strategy. It's about, and each of them has got set of seven or eight products within them, sub products within them. So it means it's a complexity of around 80 to 95 products a bank has to deal with, and they have to connect with each other. So complexity of technology is not only with so it's a 95 cells of complexity which comes together. In a chemistry, you still take one, one at a time. In bank, you have to take all of, all, the, all of them at a time because when regulator is there, he needs to see the integration of all the 75 elements together. So this is we call level zero. The previous slide, this is we call level zero of knowledge. Once you should know how the various pieces are connected. Then you go deeper into it. Then we say break it down get into level one of the knowledge, then we take a one system called core banking, and then we break down the processes there, then we take a credit card, we break down the processes there, then we break down the digital lending, break down the process there. Each piece is broken down into a pattern frameworks of close to 80 or 90 sub blocks. So lending has some 80 to 90 blocks which need to be wired together to deliver the entire four complexity which I mentioned in the beginning. 
This is about trade, this is about liquidity, this is about wealth management, this is about treasury. So these are about L1 level. Now once you've done L1 level, now the next step was, how do you make it, the language simplified for user level? Now this is a good intellectual stuff. You feel very good about it when you design an intellectual stuff. The next challenge was to make it simplify where people can listen to it. And that is where we connect this system to the user journeys. So we move these processes to the user journey and user journey become my L2 of it. We take a one user journey end to it. We said, okay, we should not be looking at process focus. We need to look at customer focus and design thinking. If I am looking at customer desirability, in that customer desirability, I need to understand his user journey, how he operates the system, and how he cut across the various processes. And that's the L2 of it. We connected the L1 dots to L2. Now we go next level. We said, okay, this is there. Now we need to move to the next level of knowledge, capturing, and we start putting confluence because this knowledge is sitting at multiple places. Customer has a knowledge, teams have a knowledge, and these need to come together. We put them into a confluence where multiple people can participate in knowledge building. A customer and the teams can participate in knowledge building. And this is a level three, which is started sometime in 2017 and 18. It's still some of the customers have experiences, some of the customer may not have experienced it, but that's the direction in which company is moving. Now it's a question of developing a robust products. Robust products when we are designing, one of the challenges, the coding is the biggest issue we found. If there are 4,000 people coding on that complex engine and one small software bug like Ethiopian airline can happen, we'll have a significant issues over there. And that's where we look at it, the challenge that we should design a coding the way 90% should be system generated, only 10% should be coded. So we reduce the coding by 90%. When you're taking SpaceX, reduced by 95%, we reduce the coding by 90%. And there are six frameworks of low, low coding platform we built. The first coding platform was, we look at each role individually in a bank and try to build role-based canvas technology. Where the canvas can be, each role can have a canvas where he can paint the picture what he wants to do. That's the first low coding platform. Second platform which we built is a if you look at digital 360, digital 180 is outside the bank, which is a role-based canvas. Digital 180 is inside the bank, where each process could be hub, where multiple processes which have affinity can come down together, and that becomes my hub technology. The third is big data. How do you ingest the data, which is a within the bank data or outside the bank data, other data sources, and ingest into a ability to understand the data better and take multiple sources of data and create a gold copy of the data. That's a big data. This investment we did in r and team out of US. Then fourth element is around machine learning, making sense of it, putting a machine learning algorithms, bot algorithm, and contextual alg algorithm. And finally, the integration, we found integration is one of the most complex things, our delays in the projects are happening because of integration. So whenever we are able to do, so when we analyze the uh, implementation delays, we found 70% delays are attributable to a, within a bank system, as well as outside the bank system. Some comma, some full stop, some dot, and how to convert into science. And that we created the olive fabric out of it. And then, Sixth one is a security related, which is a ARX. So there are six low coding platform which we built to drive towards a better product of tomorrow. Sixth was, the next step in the journey was how do you create a delivery framework? My quality department was very, very happy when we got qualified in 2008 CMI level five. And when I checked up with them, what is the complexity of the processes? they shown me there are 3,000 pages of processes. Next question I asked them, how many of the people read this 3,000 pages? How many managers in the company have read this 3,000 pages except the quality department? So ex exclude quality department, how many pe people in the company would have read 3,000 pages? 
and exclude those people who have gone through the CMM level assessment. So it means that was not read. So we went back to first principle basis, the design thinking on delivery excellence. We say that design thinking has got a seven blocks of design thinking. First step is when you design it, you observe pattern and anti-pattern, and then you look at in full, customer wants a full scope technology. First step is understanding his requirement, which we call D1. Second is saying, how do you design the solution around what customer needs are, which we call D2. And then we do the third step, which is engineering the solution, which we call D3. Then we say for on time, we need to do the better planning, which is broken down into a, not a days, into sub days, two hours. So each day should be broken down to four sub, sub element. D1, session one, D1, session two, in four session, two hour blocks where we can do the planning instead of doing the planning on a day or week. So as detailed the plannings are, better we are. D5 is monitoring and control. How do you create a steering committee with the customer to ensure that things are running in the right manner? D6 is around stakeholder management. And D7 is around how to get the best out of the people who are working on the project. So as soon as we break it down to seven elements, we put some 20 pages of business rules around each area. This is negotiable, this is not negotiable. This is mandatory, this is simple. So by making into this, our whole 3,000 page has come down to 30 page manual, which drives our business promise, intellect promise, by having the full life cycle, uh, business growth, dramatically improve the operational efficiency, lower TCO, implementation certainty, and full life cycle support. With this design, when we were doing the analysis of some of the customer sitting in this room may might be facing some more defects than other people, but we found that 70 customers or 240 have less than 10 defects in six months time. It means for them, the system is running just perfect during the entire operation cycle. And finally, this translates into our current set of systems, which is API ready, contextual systems. And there are nine different platforms which we have. Intellect Digital Core, which is simplified. Digital Transaction Banking. RM Office, which is Wealth Cube. Capital Cube is around one integrated platform for treasury liquidity and risk capital. The digital Lending. Then Trade and Supply Chain Finance, Digital Card, CBX, which is a contextual banking experience. There's a debt management products. These are the platform which we have in the banking space. And that's where we are looking at it. How do we help the customer, the promise, internal promise to reduce the operating cost by 20% and increase the customer acquisition by 50%. And for this, We'd like to invite you to our design center, work with us, with the management team together, and our people, let's have a conflict, let's have a different point of views, let's have a different expectation, and spend some two, two three days time. So a lot, lot of business teams like HDFC Bank or Bank of Bangkok or other teams comes. Should not be just one or two people. Design thinking is not an uh, element which two, three people should know. It's a culture. It's culture before strategy. Bank has to know it's a culture. Culture needs at least 10 to 15 people who believe into it. Then they can change the mass around it. And that's where the journey of the vision of what Brett King put, put the journey that to take the people on the moon, if you have to bring it on the ground and look at the reality of the ground, we need to apply design thinking in day-to-day -day work. Thank you very much.